Hey, everybody, Chaz here from Electric Outworks with Julie. We are in East Aurora, New York, getting provisions. We're getting some stuff for the cats and stuff for the studio build. So we're going to stop for coffee and join us for the ride home. tree house room and we've uh, done a lot of work you can see behind me there was the last time we were here there was a wall here there isn't any more we'll come back to that in a little while though um, because where we left off last in the last video was when I was making the limp mass bags and we can see them are and they're already installed here now in the ceiling in the rafters so we put them in and then we used uh, some twine, strung that back and forth using a staple gun, just to hold, make sure that they were gonna stay up into the rafters well. Um, we didn't want them to, to sag down. Next, we'll be putting up some, um, the rock sill, rock wool in between uh, the rafters below those. And then on the very bottom will be a layer of rock board and that'll be framed in with acoustic fabric as well. The way I made these, what I did is I took the three mil contractor bags that you can get at any home improvement store. And then what I did is I took uh, each bat of rock sill and I slid it into a bag. I folded over the contractor bag over on the Roxel so that it would be kind of like a pillow inside of it. And then I taped all of this with a combination of duct tape and then on top of that packing tape to keep it as airtight as possible. And the very last step that I did was to use a vacuum cleaner and suck as much air out as I could. Um, and then I sealed up the hole where I sucked the air out. And then the bag was done and I went on to the next one. Now we had a few uh, areas where I had to, uh, to, to put together some smaller limp mass bags just to fill in the space. You can see right up here in the ed ends, right here there's some small ones because we have two limp mass bags going up and it was just a little bit short. Then over on the very far side over here, you'll see the way that the construction of the rafters are and the joists. I created small ones like this. These are created out of one third size uh, contractor bags. Same method with the tape and the vacuum, but that's how those limp mass bags were created and how we put them in. Um, and to keep them from sagging down, we used that string method. So next, I went on to looking at this wall that we had had here. This wall had had a very deep, about a four foot deep here, a window seat kind of a thing, as wide as the window. And we knew that there was, uh, there was dead air space behind this area. And so we decided this would make a really great base trap area um, filled with insulation, uh, sound damping sort of insulation. So Chaz is designing a, a sound damping area here uh, for a bass trap based on a lot of conversations he's had with sound engineers and mastering engineers like Barry Grant and Sam Moses and Richard Dodd. I'm taking a lot of their input and in designing this space, which will be the front of the room. What I did was I first took down the paneling that was up here, the wall, then there was a lot of framing behind it. And this used to be an external wall. 
I found out. So it was very um, interesting to try to take out the framing because of how it was constructed. And there were layers of construction because it seems there were several home modelings um, that had to do with this space. So once I was able to remove the framing, it exposed the two dead air spaces on each side. There was a lot of insulation in there. There's some uh, videos that I think uh, Chaz is gonna be showing about what that looked like then. And there was this window area as well. We got the top, the bottom, and each side removed. There was even more framing behind that. Um, so after removing that framing, I was left with roof lines. So there were several home renovations and rebuilds um, in, this, in, in this house, uh, in this building, since it uh, was, was erected. And we see evidence of that in this area where we have three roof lines that I removed. One of the roof lines was there. Another roof line you'll see is coming down here. And then a third roof line, you can see right here, it actually sloped straight down to the end. We also have a fourth roof line that was up here. So what we're gonna be doing in this area, and we're gonna open a couple more of these uh, areas in between the joists uh, so that this can act as like a very big base trap going up into this area. That is what we're looking at here. And I'm going to be putting a two by four in horizontally here and then adding an, and a two by four along the bottom too. This was all constructed in a very odd way before. So I'm trying to shore up this wall in a much better way and then adding two by fours down to give it more stability with the, the load of that wall. Up at the top, I'm also gonna be adding a header area, a header beam to these joists, because these joists are gonna end up holding up a bit of weight with mass load vinyl, with limp mass bags, with some additional insulation, um, sound damping insulation, rock wool. Adding a header beam also up in here uh, right along this edge of the rafters so that we have joists that will hold that weight. Then we're going to drywall all of that area, add additional framing, and that's where the first layer of sound damping insulation will be. So that concludes where we're at. Look forward to sharing more on our progress as we move forward. Thank you. So while I was deconstructing the wall, um, I found a time capsule in there. Uh, it was hidden in the insulation, and so what I found in the wall was some very interesting stuff. Some newspapers, a couple of different magazines, The Atlantic, The Economist. This was placed there by the previous owner, Dr. Moran. So we also found this booklet in the wall that was signed by Dr. Moran, who was a previous owner of the house. And it says, Conference on Planning for Cancer Centers, and it's from 1971. And so when we opened it, along with the conference information, we found these photographs. And these photographs, on the back of them, it's identified who they are. Dr. Moran is the person in the middle. So we found a few photographs here too. So it was all rather fascinating. Yeah, and the funny thing is, this is a international conference for cancer researchers and educators. And what strikes me as funny is that behind Dr. Morand, there is a gentleman here with a cigarette in his hand. The 70s. Mr. Phil Carlson with cigarette. <laughs> So we have found a ton of stuff in the walls here, and uh, it's all very interesting. So like Julie mentioned, part of what we're doing here is based on conversations I've had with Richard Dodd, uh, Barry Grint, and also from Sam Moses, who I discovered through the Working Class Audio podcast. So Sam has a thing called the curtain wall system. He has a document that you can download with photographs and videos. I'm gonna put links down below in the description show notes. You can download those too. So Matt Boudreau from Working Class Audio has made these available on Sam's behalf. So I would recommend checking out the Working Class Audio podcast. And also Sam Moses, 
has a podcast called The Attack and Release Show with Matt Garber. I'll put links for, for their podcast down there as well. You should check these guys out, really good stuff. We got some great advice from some well-known mastering engineers and we talked to some acoustic people as well. And our build out's gonna be based on recommendations from these fine folks. So do you have any thoughts? I need to take a shower. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that'll wrap things up for this episode. We hope to see you next time. As always, this is Chaz from Electric Outworks. Peace, love, and Ringo. Be good to each other. We're out of here. Bye. So I'm exhausted now. I think I'm going to stop this now. Okay.